hello everyone and welcome to blog runner everything and welcome back to the channel and welcome to the match review as we take a look at fc barcelona's big big win in el clasico in the copa del rey on sunday night you know very very late kickoff depending on what part of the world you were in you might have even been watching this match on monday early in the morning well i'm glad to say that you were not disappointed by what you saw and i'm happy to say that FC Barcelona finally stepping up in a very, very big way here. 3-1 the final score and really it should have been 3-0 or at least 4. But you know, anyway, people go to as a thing. But at the end of the day, guys, what a performance from the team. I think um, personally, I would just have to say that uh, I owe my apologies to Xavi and Busquets because when I saw Busquets in that starting eleven, I was writing eulogies. He knows preparing my eulogy is part of the match review but what a performance that was from the team there was like just so much to love about it we were winning all of our duels and you know if you watched the last classical you know the one we lost by you know ironically three goes to one at the Benabeu you remember that it's, it's a game in which Barcelona were just about losing every duel possible you know we had the midfielders Frankie de Jong, Busquets being beaten to every ball and it wasn't any different for like the wingers or for our defenders but here oh my goodness it was a flipped script and i think it was honestly just can't i can barely pick holes in this performance that's how good it was but anywho um excuse me for my uh excitedness and my being happy to see us finally get back to getting some silverware even though it's not the silverware that we want but hopefully this can give the team a push to be able to do bigger things anywho like we usually do on this channel um in match reviews i'm going to first of all look at the tactical setup for both teams then i'm going to give you my negatives and my positives before giving you my team rating and the coach rating as well as a man of the match so if you if you like that if you also just generally like what you're seeing out here you know if you're thinking that this blog right everything channel is like yeah you know this this kid knows what he's doing you know let's support this guy yeah then go ahead and hit like you know hit like on this video and also do subscribe to the channel because there will be a lot more content coming through even as the matches are coming we're going to be here for each and every one of those matches reviewing them and previewing them in some cases as I will tell you, I was going to preview this uh, El Clasico match, but I'm glad that I didn't put my preview out there. I was a real negative Nancy with it because, you know, you know, emotions and recent performances and that kind of stuff. Anywho, let's go ahead and talk about tactical setup because that's more or less where some of our talking points are going to come from. Okay, nothing different here for Real Madrid set up in a 4-3-3 like they usually would in such a... Um, a matchup, you know, cover how Militao, Rudiger, Ferland, Mendy in front of Thibaut Kotua, and then that usual midfield trio of Modric, Cruz, but sorry, not usual. Was, uh, it's not the usual trio here, okay? Kamavinga came in in place of Chuameni, and you know, you smelled that there could be some, yeah, you know, there was some chances to be had there because Kamavinga doesn't start for a reason. And up front, of course, you had Nishis Jr., Karim Benzema, and Ernesto, I mean Federico Valverde. Yeah, those three guys, of course, the FC Barcelona. So much trouble in recent Clásicos. Anywho, FC Barcelona set up in a different formation than they usually do. In goal, of course, we still had Marcante to stake in, and we still had the usual, you know, back four. The back four that we said we need to be seeing in all big games. Yeah, Valde, Christensen, Kunde, and Araujo. Although, you know, a bit of a worry, it looked like Carajo came off injured, hoping that's not really the case. At in front of them, we saw Busquets and Frank de Jong in a double pivot, and it was Dembele, Pedri, and Gavi ahead of them, and um, Lewandowski leading the line. So it was a 4-2-3-1 formation from FC Barcelona here, and not the usual 4-3-3, and that's where we are going to start looking at how exactly Barcelona won this match. Now, I'm going to my negatives and positives and I would like to be like, you know, um, so stoic that I can be able to point a negative out from this game. But like, come on, guys. <laughs> I mean, fine, if you really want me to say a negative, we didn't score five. Okay, there, that's the negative. Now, let's move on and talk some positives from this performance. First and foremost, 
the setup, I felt, was a huge positive. It's good to see Xavi Hernandez making changes, you know, that when he sees the team is lacking something. Because, you know, right now we've been having a bit of issues with our wingers. And um, it's, it's, it's no secret that apart from Dembele, no one else has really looked convincing in the past few games that we've played. So Xavi decided, well, then let's just switch it up a little bit. My biggest strength is midfield, where you've got Gavi, you've got Pedri, you've got Frankie De Jong, and you've got Busquets. So he decided to put all of them in here. And I think it was a very, 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 very good decision. Because we were able to dominate midfield, okay? And something that you're going to notice here is that whenever Barcelona were on the ball, we were always able to find a free man, okay? There was always one player who was unmarked. Now, most of the time, I noticed it would be Araujo and would play the ball out to him at right back. For some reason, Real Madrid weren't pressing him too much, which I thought was a bit of a mistake because you want to press the one guy who's not very good at passing the ball in that back line. But anywho, moving on from that, my second positive is that, you know, everybody stepped up. You like to see this. Everybody. And I mean... Everybody stepped up here. I could not point out a single player who had a bad performance or who did not put in a 10 out of 10 kind of shift, you know? Honestly speaking, it was pretty good. It was a shame Dembele wasn't able to get on the score sheet, but I mean, Thibaut Courtois has got really long legs and I mean, any other goalkeeper, he would have probably scored from that chance that he got, but he did what he could. And he put a lot of pressure on Felan Mendy, who, honestly speaking, this match was neutered. Just like Vinicius Jr. as well was neutered by, um, of course, Ronald Araujo. And he kept on having to come infield to try and find some space. And the only kind of moments that he had on the ball were when he would drift infield away from Araujo and try to target Kunde and Busquets a bit more. But otherwise, this was a very, very good performance from everybody who stepped up. And um, my, 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 my next positive is the fact that we were clinical. Recently, I have done a lot of complaining about the fact that we were not putting away our chances. And I am glad to say that was not the case this time around, okay? We didn't have, like, a plethora of goal-scoring chances. You know, we only had six shots on target. But from those six shots, we were able to score three goals. And mind you, that six shots total was just identical to what Real Madrid managed. So the difference here is that we were actually more clinical in front of goal. Of course, it helped that the last two chances came on the break, you know, so it was a bit more open. But this is the reason why in these matches, you want to be clinical so that when you get your first chance and you put it away, you're able to put your opponents under pressure so they can't sit back and they have to, you know, play. They have to open up spaces. But when they do that, you get more opportunities and you are able to score more goals. Okay, my final positive here, there are quite a few of them and I've been talking for a long time now to be wrapping this up. But my final positive here was the defense and you know, I mentioned it earlier as well, this should be the defense that starts any big match for FC Barcelona, no questions asked, these guys were spotless. A special mention here for Alejandro Baudi, because I mean look, both Araujo, with Kunde with Christensen we expect that from those guys you know they've been doing this at least for some time we've seen their quality for some time Balde this is his breakout season need I remind you okay this is his first season playing as a starter in the first team and just look how he was dominating that entire wing he easily could have had an assist with that chance I mentioned earlier for Dembele and just the way he came up with that whole passage of play the way he came up with it just you know taking a touch from deep bursting past everybody cover how whoever name them and all of a sudden real madrid found themselves on the back foot with only two men back and you know i just i don't know what 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 else i can say it's a shame i couldn't give him man of the match because there was another youngster who was obviously deserving of that so let's get to that but first let's talk match ratings and we can talk first of all the team's rating now i really wanted to give a team rating of 10 out of 10 here because you know the performance was was that good but we we, we couldn't keep a clean sheet so i was thinking this is probably a 9.5 out of 10. then i said to myself this is an el classico do you really expect to be keeping a clean sheet against you know 
Benzema and Vinicius, the form that they've been in the past couple of years. So, yeah, team rating here, 10 out of 10. Manager rating as well. Xavi gets a 10 out of 10 as well because, I mean, this whole match went according to his plan. Ancelotti tried to make his subs and his changes, but they just couldn't. They came too late, and at that point, Barcelona already had a grip on the game, and there's nothing Real Madrid could have done to take it away from them. So, yeah, 10 out of 10 team performance and a 10 out of 10 managerial performance as well. So, we can now end this by talking about the man of the match. So, I already said that it's going to be another youngster. The only other teenager, should I put it that way, who was on the field of play at the same time as Alejandro Baudi was. That is, of course, Gavi. Before I talk too much here, I also give some honorable mentions to Pedri, Frankie De Jong, Busquets, Alejandro Baudi, Araujo, Christensen, Ter Stegen, like, okay, I'm going to name the whole team now, okay? But seriously, Gavi here, what a performance it was. Two assists and a goal. Anybody who is still in doubt of this kid's talent and just how good he is, like, watch this match all over again and just see how he was really, really vital to how Barcelona dominated not just the midfield, but also Real Madrid's defensive third. Okay, Barcelona were able to dominate in Real Madrid's defensive third as well as in the midfield. So that was all mostly because of Gavi. He has a very, very, very good understanding of space, where to be, what kind of runs to make. We saw that both on Lewandowski's goal and on Pedri's goal, as well as on his goal as well. He also has a, a very calm head, despite how fiery he is. He is quite calm when the, when the moment calls for it, and we saw that also with his goal. So, man of the match here definitely goes to Gavi. Alrighty. That's that, guys. I think um, I've spoken enough. Obviously, I'm, I'm very happy in high spirits here to have seen such a great performance and hoping that we don't come crashing down just immediately in the Copa with like a uh, trash performance like the one we saw in our last Copa outing. But you know, fingers crossed. But um, aside from that, thank you for tuning in. Have a great day and Forza Basco.